welcome to Quick Link Cycling Podcast. Today I am joined by a rising star of the mountain bike and cross scene. It's Elodie Kuiper. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. I really hope I got your name right because normally I check and I forgot to check today. So apologies. Well, it's okay if you say it in like an English way, but it's normally pronounced as Elodie Kuiper. It's more okay. French and Dutch combined, but you can call me whatever you want. I will respond to everything. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I guess let, let's start in an obvious place. Like, how's your season been so far? Uh, it's actually turned out extremely well. I had no expectations at the beginning of the season uh, because uh, normally I'm a cyclocross rider and I only do mountain biking because I really like it and really enjoy it. I don't like racing in on the road as much anymore so i stopped uh, right after the national championships in january because i wasn't feeling okay i wasn't feeling well and mentally physically it was all just too draining for me so i stopped and then i went on a training camp in february and actually after that everything every week it gets better and better and better so i'm actually happy with that oh amazing um like for you I know I started by saying like how's the season been but because you do cross and mountain bike like when do you stop one season and start the other like you know when does one year end and the next begin so yeah my year is 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 very different from uh from obviously a roadie because uh, our season from a cycle cross it starts in September and then you always have the last race which is in Osmala, which is in February. So after February, we normally stop and then we have a month of rest and we do a build up again. And then in April, we start racing again. But the mountain bike season actually starts in February and then it ends around August normally. So it, there is a big overlap there. So I'm trying to figure out when to stop and when to start with races and see how it goes and what works and what doesn't work with, for me at the moment with my trainer so yeah that that's really interesting like because that sounds like you've almost got a continual year where you could race on any given weekend if you want to race you could probably find something in one of the two sort of disciplines that that you do yeah that that, that is the case so in uh Actually, in September, uh, I have an overlap in uh, which I do some cyclocross races. Then I go back to mountain biking and then I go back to cyclocross. And then again, I go back to mountain biking. So, um, yeah, I have not done that before. So we will see how that goes. But I think it will be the same. I mean, if you can ride your mountain bike, then you can ride a cyclocross bike for sure. Because mountain biking is so much harder than cyclocross riding. And You think mountain bikes are harder one? Yeah, yeah, it's much more difficult. Like cyclocross riding is just technically it's it's difficult, but the mountain biking you need to be fearless. If you see the courses compared to a cyclocross race, it's it's so different. Ah, that's really because to me, I look at mountain bike and go, ah, that you know that doesn't look too bad. It's just really long climbs, which you know when I was younger suited me. Uh, and cyclocross is all high power for an hour and then you're done whereas mountain bike some races like enduro and you know some of the stage races uh like you need a lot of power for a very long time and that that's more physically demanding so uh, you know it's interesting that you think that or you feel that mountain biking is the harder discipline of the two yeah for me it is like for me personally because i am brought up with like cyclocross riding so everything that i do in the cyclocross it just come comes natural to me and the switching between like going on your bike and off your bike i can actually do that without even thinking it's just i don't need to think i i know what i'm doing i know how to do a corner i know what pressure what tires etc etc and with the mountain biking is just it's one and a half hour if I do marathons, it's five hours, four hours. 
of constantly just pushing your body and body and you get tired over time because you do that and then you have like rocks that you need to ride off and then jumps and drops and everything and it's just so much more difficult for me because I've been doing it for two seasons now mountain biking so I need to think a lot about it I also still need to learn so much about the mountain biking scene so maybe that's why I think it's harder but yeah. we let the people decide at home which one is harder because I don't know yeah of course like certainly from a, a British standpoint like mountain biking is very accessible like every bike in a shop you know your typical shops where you're going to see a bike when you're young it's all mountain bikes they're, they're not going to be good ones but they're all mountain bikes um cross bikes you would never see and i don't think i've actually seen a, a cross bike in a shop um you have road specialist shops and you're going to see road bikes in there but i guess with being from the Netherlands, is it potentially different that mountain bikes aren't in every shop and that road bikes are more sort of seen and visible? I think it also depends on the brand. So, for mm. example, uh, you have like uh, in the Netherlands, Giant, it's it's uh, it's a very big brand. Mm. And they obviously, they have cyclocross bikes, they have road bikes, which is more accessible for the people. But then... If you go here in the Netherlands or in Belgium, because I live in Belgium now, but I am Dutch. But um, if you see it there in the winter, everyone goes for a mountain bike ride. There are a lot of, um, how do you call that? Uh, the French word is like VTT. So there are like little laps and tours that they make mm. in the forest. And then people can just ride them. Like everyone can ride them. It's just a weekend and everyone comes and they, uh, have like these feed stations every 20k and then people can ride 20 50 70k whatever they want and it's very very nice to do so if you have with friends and everything and then some like 300 riders they go to an event like that and they just eat and ride their bikes in the winter and on mountain bikes especially and if you just look at the stores as what you were saying here there are also a lot of mountain bikes that you can see and some stores maybe have cyclocross bikes, but why they have cyclocross bikes at the moment is because the gravel scene is so big here right now. Everyone wants to do gravel. We want to have a cyclocross bike, then we can ride gravel. But well, if we have a gravel bike, blah, blah, blah. so I don't know how it is in the UK, but just... yeah, th th there is a, a gravel scene that I'm aware of, but it's not certainly not publicized. You know, mountain biking is is the route in and then road biking is is become popular because of like Mark Cavendish, Bradley Wiggins, you know, some names really making it big. Um I suppose for the people in the Netherlands and Belgium, it's like, oh yeah, a person's just won a big race. Well, <laughs> that's Wednesday for you. You know, <laughs> it's nothing new for them. But at the time for the UK it, that was really big. Um, you said that you're you're quite new to mountain biking, but you've already done a World Cup. Um, you did the Eliminator World Cup race in Dubai, I want to say, or Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Well, so it, it's only an hour away, so doesn't mind. Yeah. What is the sort of what was that experience like doing the World <laughs> Cup for for mountain biking? Yeah, it was so crazy. So um, I'm I'm just gonna tell you a very long short story about yeah. it so my uh my big goal of the year was to actually ride the bmc so i just competed now it was a four day stage race i've never done a stage race before and i was training for that very very hard because it was like um 80k every day so it was like four or five hours on the bike every single day so i was doing a lot of uh endurance rides uh, and not very uh, much uh, interval training or anything. And then all of a sudden, um, a friend of mine, uh, she's national champion, uh, Didi De Vries, she called me and, uh, or, and she was like, yeah, we, we need a girl in Abu Dhabi uh, tomorrow because otherwise we cannot start the race because we will be with two, uh, two there weren't two, as many girls um, 
competing there because they had to have like 30 girls and they had like 29 at that moment because a French girl, she got COVID, so she couldn't fly and this and that. And then at three in the evening, I was calling with the organizer. I was like, yeah, I can come. And he was booking my ticket and everything. And then six hours later, I was on a, pl- on a plane all the way to do to Abu Dhabi. And uh, I did a World Cup like the day after that. So I slept in two days. I maybe slept like seven hours or eight hours, something like that. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's incredible. Uh, And you didn't do like, I I don't want to sound rude or remiss, but you did do badly. You got ninth in in that, um, if I recall. And like, yeah, I was I was seven. So I was like, I was wow. surprised as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I I came over and I was like, oh, free trip, uh, a, good, a good trip to uh, Abu Dhabi. Yes, oh, this is going to be very nice. Oh, I've never been there. And then uh, we we did a recon of the course, and there was like a a big drop in the course all of a sudden, and I was like, I don't know if I can take this <laughs> because the drop was so high. It was it, it came it was as high as me, and I'm like uh, one sixty. You need to maybe translate that for the English people because uh, this is in centimeters <laughs> and not in uh, <laughs> uh, mean, it's, five it's, foot four. Yeah, something like that. So it was very high, and I was yeah. like, "Oh my god, no way! I'm not gonna do this. I cannot do this." And then during the course practice run, we went there in like ten o'clock in the morning. But in Abu Dhabi, it was fifty degrees. I was I was dying over there. I I, I literally. Yeah, I cannot even explain. And then we had like 30 minutes of practice. And then I didn't do the drop because I was just too scared. And then in the evening at 10, we had our race because then it was only 30 degrees, which oh, was only. Yeah. warm. <laughs> it was still warm. And then all of a sudden in the race, I did the drop and I was like, just fuck it. If I die, I die. You know, let's just <laughs> go roll. And then I did it, and I was actually very impressed with myself as uh, someone who didn't train at all on her interval, who was just at that moment very good endurance rider, but not interval rider. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is eliminators going to be something that you look at doing more? You've got a cyclocross background, so it's that's all about high power and you know not massive duration. Um, eliminators, I believe, are even quicker. It's just a series of short races. Like, is that mm-hmm. something you're going to focus on, or or do you think stage races and the sort of longer mountain bike is, is more um, suited to your attributes? So, at the moment, I am still looking between the three disciplines. So, obviously, just a cross country riding and then marathons and the eliminators. I'm doing this weekend, I'm flying to Turkey, actually, <laughs> to do a cross-country race and an eliminator. Um, wow. So I'm going to do more. Um, I, uh, I had a talk with my trainer and uh, we, uh, we discussed and we were like, if we do endurance now and then mm, in June, July, we switch over to the eliminator, it will be best for cyclocross races because now I need to build up the endurance and everything and then as the se- season from the cyclocross will end or will start then the shorter races and more the explosive races will be better for me if we're looking forward to um racing cyclocross race seasons in september so okay so it's you're a going, mix <laughs> yeah it's a it's a proper blend of approaches then um because i also saw you you're doing the alpen tour in in austria as well like what yeah. what does that have in store for you yeah i'm just, i'm looking forward to it because um i i want a ticket actually to uh, to compete there i've never been to austria that is going to be my my the best thing about it all i don't mind racing just that i'm going to be in austria is going to be so amazingly cool because it's such a nice place I've seen on pictures and videos and um, I, it's going to be less tough as what I did here in Belgium because the stages are going to be shorter, but 
and the elevation is not going to be as much as I did here in Belgium during the BMC, but the climbs are going to be much longer. So in the BMC, I had like in one in one stage, I had like 15 climbs hmm. because obviously Belgium in the Ardennes, it goes up, but not as long. Yeah. <laughs> so we're very steep uh, and short um, climbs. And then in the Alpha 2, it will be maybe only one or two climbs a day because they're so long there. And then uh, the last stage is actually a 10K uh, time trail, which only goes uphill. So, <laughs> Yeah, that, that does not sound nice. Just time trialing. Nah, okay. Uphill. <laughs> mm, maybe not. <laughs> No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It will be a nice experience and then we will see uh, how it's going to go because what well, the thing is with the cross-country racing, um, the courses are sometimes so technical and I'm just not that technical yet with the, with the mountain bike, unfortunately. I'm working on it very hard, but if you're only doing this for two years and yeah, it just doesn't come natural to me and uh, the eliminators they're nice they're almost like a street races which we also do in the netherlands those are like 40 minutes mountain bike races just in the center of the city which okay. we have cool jumps and everything but it's also very nice and then obviously the marathons a lot of marathon riders if you look at their age they're like above 25 30 they're much older because the i'm so, sorry the well, older relative people. to you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the older people compared to me with my 22 years old, they have a much more of an endurance. Um, I don't know how to describe it in English, but yeah, of course, they have like, more mass or something. I don't know. As you get older, you tend to develop more endurance and less sort of extreme power. That's why sprinters have a definite shelf life. Um, yeah, <laughs> for example. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's something that I am now um, yeah, which is not so nice for me to compete against like women because most women who who are riding better than me they're just a lot older than me because they they have the mass and I don't have it. Um, not everyone, obviously. I'm not saying that 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 is why I'm not riding as fast, but <laughs> it's uh, it's I think it's a factor definitely. Yeah, in, of course. Um, um, your own natural physiology will have an impact um and obviously that will evolve as you change as a rider um, yeah I, I think one of the things I'm really interested in or certainly that I've noticed is you seem to have like no team so normally you know you, you know a, a lot of mountain bike riders either come from a club or they've got a massive team behind them, like Trek Factory Racing or the Scott team, um, just to name a couple of examples. But you sort of seem to ride solo. I know you've mentioned your trainer. Like, how does that kind of, how do you make that work for you? It actually works so much better for me. So I uh, used to be in a, in a team. I've been in, in several teams. <laughs> okay. um, I've been in a, in a road to UCI team, but the, that uh, team had to stop because the team manager, he was, um, how do you say, being charged with uh, um, Me Too uh, situations. So he was harassing all the girls. So that was not really nice. That's all, maybe also one of the reasons that I stopped riding on the road. And then I went to cyclocross. Uh, I stayed with a team a couple of teams but um let's say that our uh yeah our agreements they weren't as nice anymore uh and uh they weren't serving my needs anymore yeah so uh, we call that I, creative differences yeah <laughs> something like that if we say it like that it's all it's all good and then i decided to start my own team because uh i also have my own business in which I uh, do like social media for brands and um, I do their social media accounts and everything and I create content for them, et cetera, et cetera. And that is also one of the reasons that I stopped with working with the team because they had their own sponsors and I wasn't allowed to do my job anymore, but my team wasn't paying as much 
as I was earning with my own business and with my uh, with my own company. So yeah, that's why I stopped. And it's actually quite nice being a solo rider because in the cyclocross you don't really need a team. It is nice to have one. I mean, uh, for example, now I go to uh, most races with uh, with my boyfriend or on my own. So I went to the BMC on my own. So I did two days there. I did everything on my own. And after two days, my boyfriend he came and he helped me. So in that in that area, it is nice to have a team who they can help you. But in the mountain bike scene, in the cyclist scene, everyone is so nice and everyone will help you. So it's one big happy family. So my opinion, I don't really need a team. I mean, I'm I would be it would be nice to ride for a team. But at this moment, it's it's just not serving me, and apparently, I'm not riding good enough because I'm not getting any offers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, getting what seventh was it seventh on BMC? Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, seven... No, I was eighth in the oh. in the general classification, but I two days I was seven, so we were close. For the <sighs> I, I was trying to keep an eye <laughs> on it, um, but yeah, like you're clearly doing well it's just curious because you always fit it, cycling holds that weird position of being both a team sport and an individual sport like your road winners and cross winners and mountain bike winners are all the individual but they're supported by a team either behind the scenes or like even in the same race um and obviously that sometimes tactics come into it but i i suppose at a certain stage, it's just whoever's got the best fitness and the best legs on the day wins anyway. I think I think it's also a bit about like the gender because for a man, obviously, a te- to have a team is much better because you can do what you say the tactics. But most most times for the woman, yeah, a, a team tactic doesn't really really matter because no one is actually someone is very good and someone is is there is there the level is so different from time to time then they maybe have like there are like six teams and all they all have one good rider and then the riders who come less than that they are just not in the top six so they cannot really help their um i don't know the 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 sort of team leader yeah the team leader they cannot help them so i think it's a little bit different from time to time there yeah, that makes sense. Um, one thing I was going to ask um, doesn't really fit with the flow of the conversation, but um, it was about cro- uh, doing a cyclocross season. So it, obviously you did things like the Super super Prestige and Boom. Uh, I think you did another Super Prestige this, uh, last year. Like, what is it like to, to line up on the start line with people like uh, Lucinda Brand? Or even in your, like, the Netherlands are amazing in the women's scene. Like, just to line up with world champions on the same Um, start line as you. I must say it's just, it's just just normal. I don't know. (laughs) From the year that I, that I turned, like, when I was, like, the first year that I turned, um, how do you say it? Like, when I was 13. I think that's under on a fifteen or on a fourteen or something. When I was thirteen, it was the first UCI race that I rode. It was in my neighborhood, and then uh, yeah, I had to ride against Marianne Vos. Oh wow! You have to you, you have to think that was like years ago now. No, yeah, something like that. I cannot really count very bad, very bad, but uh, okay. So yeah, and and then I had to ride against her and. I was 13 and she was in her prime prime years. So after that, yeah, nothing. I actually beat it that uh, that film. And everyone is just normal. Everyone is just okay. Everyone is super nice. I like riding races with them. Um, yeah. If you just don't get in the way of their race, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Do you think that helps you that you just think, oh, that's normal therefore like I because for me if I was lining up against like I don't know like what one up like I'd be like oh my god like I don't deserve to be here 
but for you because it's so normal does that stop you feeling that sort of imposter syndrome I don't think so I I, I think that that's also uh, one of the things that um, this is nothing to do with cycle cause or a little bit but you have in the mountain bike we had to start in the same race as the men so at one moment like the best mountain bikers they pass you the men so that is also a kind of a feeling that you get like you have you need to have this feeling in a race like this is my race i i deserve to be here this is also my race and you don't need to get out of the way for everyone because mm -hmm. it is their race but it's also my race and i need to think about my thing as they're also doing so as long as i'm not saying that you need to be selfish and if the first one they are going to pass you and you're the last that you shouldn't get out of the way but i mean if you're riding 30th or something and 32 wants to pass you then they need to put in a little bit of effort because it's your race as well as their race yeah yeah and, that's and if really... you are as if you are in the first corner if you're the fastest in the first corner and lucina brunt is behind you yeah then you own that race that is your place then she at that moment is not as good as you so you need to ride there until she passes yeah yeah that's <laughs> fair enough um it's kind of i like that how it's kind of you run your own race and that kind of fits you well with sort of riding without a team you're you're riding your own race kind of through your career so far um i guess one sort of question to to tie everything together like at the end of this season like what do you think would be success what season uh, so, <laughs> mountain bike okay. everything combined what let's do we go want to know? <laughs> first end of mountain bike and then secondly end of cross season that so just... february 2023 oh my god i have just actually no idea um if i'm being honest before uh before february i was still thinking to myself like i'm gonna be a pro one day like i want to do everything in my power to become a pro and after after february i just got this feeling like i don't think it's 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 gonna happen i don't think that i'm good enough i don't think that i, I can be good enough so at that point i i i switched in my head and i was like okay, i'm gonna focus more on my company i'm gonna help other people with their social media and uh, all their writers with their social media and teams and events and everything and i just want to do the races that i like what i like i want to do it for fun and everything and since then all my results were so good <laughs> that i'm like what the fuck did i ever thought that i was so bad <laughs> so um i'm actually at this moment already very satisfied with the whole mountain biking thing mm. i will see what the cyclocross season is going to bring um i hope that after the cyclocross season because uh next year it will be my first year as um as an elite woman mm -hmm. because i uh, i will not be under 23 anymore so i have actually no idea how that is going to go and if at the end of the whole season of everything to mountain biking and cycle season if i have a good feeling about it then i'm happy actually at this point uh, and that's an amazing way to be like it doesn't always have to be about the results sometimes it's just the journey and the happiness that you have along the way and i think that's amazing that's also what i want to share with everyone it's not always about the results because everyone is always asking you like at first like what place did you get instead of that, they just ask you like how did you feel about the race how mm. was it for you how does it make you feel no they always ask you what was your place <laughs> that is that is not how it works you know in my opinion i mean everyone if you win then it's nice to say yes i was first but otherwise it's not nice so if there are like 100 people lining up then it's one percent chance that you get the answer it was okay because it was nice because i won yeah. but the other percent 
they are going to say, yeah, oh yeah, for me it was good. Or another is going to say, no, for me it was bad. So I'm yeah. being very cryptic at the moment. No one is going to understand my my logic, but live with it. No, I like it. I think we should be asking riders like, how how did you feel and how what how did it go? Not did you win? Like because I, that is something what I want to say. Like in, in here in the Netherlands, in Euro, the the journalist from Eurosport, like the first week of the Giro, Tom Dumoulin, everyone has so had so high expectations from the guy, and everyone was like, yeah, oh, vote for Matt, yeah, oh, um, vote for Matt. Tom Dumoulin, he had such a bad day. He was such bad. I'm like, why are you doing this this to this guy? You're just building up pressure for him. And he doesn't, this is not going to serve him well. This is only going to like demolish him or make him insecure or, yeah. you know, just, and then they asked like, how did it go? And he was like, yeah, it, it didn't work well, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't feeling well. And then, you get like the explanation for why it wasn't going as good that day. But sometimes people from other from from the outside they put so much so much pressure on you. And even without you knowing, you put pressure on yourself because of those people. And you need to cut people like that loose. Yeah. Boom, throw them in the garbage because you don't need them. It doesn't serve you. It's their energy just all the way and just be happy with what you do hello today i am joined by a return guest um she's been very active in mountain biking in cyclocross earlier this season doing some mountain bike eliminator which may be new to to some of you and will be definitely something to to discuss and she's had some short track success as well um in xcc so it is my pleasure to reintroduce elodie kuiper how are you kid how are you i'm doing well thank you um yeah i don't know where you want to start but shall we start with some eliminator what actually is it because a, a lot of our our listeners maybe don't know i think i've seen it in cross-country skiing maybe i think they do it in that sometimes i think that's where i'm familiar with the format but what what is it so basically if anyone asks me this question i always say it's a little bit like bmx because most people know bmx so there are different rounds in um in our sport the two fastest they go to the next round so they're like quarterfinals half finals semifinals and then every time the two best they go to the next round so it's it's like an elimination which is already said like in the word itself uh but they're like they're like very short tracks so it's a lot of the time is a little bit technical like an xco track on the mountain bike but it's just like very short i think most our races are around two to four minutes and then we're done so you fly all around the world just for four minutes (laughs) yeah uh, so in each one you have to do like a a qualification round is that the day before just to to get seeded no it's on the day itself it's like a time trail and then everyone uh like the best time will get into like different heats and then it's sorted out like that okay so like I, I guess it helps to qualify well, but it's not everything. Like you could still progress if you qualify last versus, you know, qualifying first yeah. just makes it easier. But you could, <laughs> it doesn't stop you winning. No, it doesn't. It always happens to me because I always have like a very bad time trail and then afterwards it always goes very well. But it is a bit tricky though because you need to have a kind of a good time because you get points for uh, the time trail as well if you're doing the overall uh, world cup standing then you also get points for time trail so if your time trail sucks you miss a lot of points if you're doing it for the overall standings Uh, of course yeah yeah. and do you find it's easier to do the the time trial part or do you find it easier because you sort of suggested like you don't qualify very well but you do race very well is that because there's other people there or like why is that 
Uh, it's because I'm still very new to the whole mountain bike scene. I it's like my second year racing, and I just don't know yet how fast I can go into a corner. And you can do like do a recon and see how fast you're gonna go. But then if you see other people doing it in the recon, they're never going as fast as they do in the races. And in the races, you see like, ah, okay, so I can even go further in this or like faster in this corner. And then I see that and then I just go with the flow and then it's always much better. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because there was one um, one race this year, I think from, I want to say Germany. Um, I could be wrong, but um, there was a lot of crashes. It was a very wet course and, and people obviously crashed a lot. Um, I think you benefited maybe from that. Like there was one race where a couple people crashed in front of you so you got second um i could be uh, very yeah, wrong. That's, yeah that's the part about elimination it always happens it's like mm-hmm. the the bad luck it happens to everyone they're also like very good riders that break their change and things like that and then it's yeah. just over for them. the race that you were talking about was in love because the one in germany in Ale, it was uh that was because the track was just so dangerous in my opinion like all the riders said it as well and um i crashed in a time trail there as well God. So, uh, <laughs> yeah because it, it looks like a like correct me if i'm wrong but it looks like there's a lot of sort of a community where like a lot of you are all friends outside of a, the racing like your enemies on the track but outside of that like I remember our first interview, you said that you ended up going to your first eliminator because your friend was doing it and needed an extra person in the race. Um, uh, And since then, I've seen certainly on Instagram, like some of the Brazilians, some of the Germans that you you sort of hang out with. Is that, is it right to say there's a, a community and a sort of friendship going? Definitely. We're all friends and we all help each other. It's not like, in some road races that I have experienced that yeah, people are just not nice to you. Mm-hmm. It's everyone likes each other. And for like the biggest example of us all being one community and being friends is uh, with the Brazilian girl, Marcela. And then you had Didi and Marcela, she was second or uh, like third in the overall standing and Didi was fourth, but it could still change in the last race. But Marcela's bike got stolen like two days before the last race of the season. And then oh, Didi nice. said to her, you want my spare bike? So I feel like if that would happen in a road race or in a cyclocross race, nobody would say like, hey, you want my bike uh, or not? <laughs> but in the Eliminator, everyone just yeah helps each other out and it's very nice to see. Yeah, yeah, it's quite nice to, to see all the pictures from, from Paris, which was your first World Championships, if I'm not wrong. Um, what... I guess, is the World Championships any different from a standard World Cup round? Uh, yes, it is, because there are a lot of extra riders who don't go to the World Cups. Because, But yeah, you see that with like all the World Championships, like for, in, for how do you say it? Like, um, for example, so with like the Marathon uh, World mm-hmm. Championships, then there are people on the starting line who have never rode a marathon and they just want to ride the world championships because they just want a jersey. It, it is like that, unfortunately. But I don't always think nice because then all the good riders, they come. Obviously, it's normal, but yeah, they come to the world championships and then just because they're good and not disciplined, they go to that dis- to like eliminator races, but they never do any World Cups or any other races. And you also don't know how good they are, like what do you need to expect and things like that. But it is nice that everyone wants to come on a race. So, Yeah, I mean, it, it makes it interesting because I guess the from what I saw, like the, the time trial actually eliminated a few people itself um, because it was a top 16 qualified, was it? Yes. Um, and obviously you made it and um, it was a very Dutch heavy um quarterfinal like yeah I was like I mean was it three out of the four were Dutch um 
Yeah, all the Dutch riders were in, in the same heat. And uh, yeah, it was a very tough one for me. But what I experienced, I was very, very good at that uh, in that race as well. And it was actually the first time that I could keep up with like the first uh, two. Because in the past, I've experienced that I always uh, am like the last. And then I just kind of... What is it like eliminate myself because you're last from the starting grid but this time i was keeping up with everyone and then when i was riding up the stairs yeah my whole gear i don't know why but my whole gear just didn't work anymore and now that i got home i was to my boyfriend and i was like yeah could you check it and we could not find anything and i was like okay i was just crazy you know and then this week We've uh, we've seen that the battery, because I write like with Scrum, the battery, uh, if you charge it, it can only last for like a half hour and then it goes shit. And then I have a spare battery. So I put in like the wrong battery into the mountain bike and then the gear was just like. (laughs) I was like, oh, my fucking God. But I didn't know that at the time that the two batteries were not um, as good. So that one was bad and one was good. But now uh, I know. So now I threw the shit battery out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, God, that that must be so frustrating that, you know, you get this chance on a world stage and then you're keeping up for what, as you said, like for one of the first times. And then you get, you know, problems with technology stop you from from doing it. Um it was a little bit shit, but it was also, I was also like, okay, it's okay. I really liked being there and I have been sick a week before. And then when I got back, I got sick again. So, mm. I mean, the whole experience was very well for me. And then next year we will see again because I really enjoyed myself. So I, I cannot really complain. Yeah. And is that going to be your focus going forward? Because when we spoke last, you said you were going to do the, I think you'd either just finished or were about to do the BMC um, mountain bike stage race and you'd kind of focused on some of those races this year and then where we've seen you most on TV or YouTube or however has been through the Eliminators. So they're very different in, in style. What What's your focus? Yeah, so it was obviously my plan to be more of like a marathon rider then I got the opportunity to do the eliminators. And I think going forward next year, I want to like combine them again. Hmm. Because it is quite nice to do like the longer races, but also the short ones. But the thing I have with the longer races is that I just really, really like racing them. Most of the times I'm just not uh, like good enough because you see with like the longer races that the older women, like above 30, like 35, they win all the races just Mm. because their endurance is so much stronger because you get it with like age with the women. So it's normal, but I just really like doing the races. And then with the eliminators, the thing is most of the time, I um, like the start for me is always shit. (laughs) <laughs> because my acceleration is just not that fast but then if it is like a long sprint I can like out sprint them because I I just just need like two seconds to get me going you know and yeah. then when I am on speed I am on speed like I'm poof, but it just always takes me a little while and that is what I need to um how do you say it like practice more going forward and now that I've done the races this year I know what to expect I know what the courses are like and everything. So I will see what we're going to do next year, if it's possible to still do the Eliminators because there are going to be a lot of World Cups around the world again. And I just don't know if it will be possible, like, financial-wise. Yeah, of course. And it's interesting, like you said, because now you know what to expect, you know how to train. Because, like, certainly growing up, you're always like, oh, I think I'm good at cornering. I think I'm good at sprinting or whatever. And then you come up against someone, you're like, oh, okay, that's what good at sprinting is or that's what good at cornering is. Um, so, yeah, it, it's very interesting from from that point of view. And you mentioned there's a, a wide range of courses. We talked a bit about um, Loiva and Alan. Like, 
what has been your favourite course of the uh, Eliminator series? <laughs> you know, I'm going to be honest, it was Winterberg, but okay. Winterberg is because it was almost like a cyclocross race. Okay. And uh, the funny thing was, it was all on grass, so it was the only race that we raced on grass. All the rest of the races are all on either gravel or just road. Mm. But the, fa- the fun fact is, with all the Eliminator riders, they're just not used to riding on um, on low bar or PSI. I think PSI is what you use in, in England. Yeah, yeah. So they they just don't know how to do that like on low because they always ride with like two bars, which is like, I don't know what PSI it is, but it's like, I think 40 or something. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like 40 or 50. Something like that. And um, in Winterberg, because it was grass, you needed to ride uh, very low and it was also raining. So I put my tires very low and I actually did quite like quite well with the races. Mm. So I was very fun with that. But if I'm going to be honest, the nicest course to ride on uh, was just in Paris because all the obstacles were just so cool and it was a lot of cornering, a lot of chubu going around that, that, that. And my time trail was actually the best in Paris that it has been for, I don't know how long. I think mm. I was like eighth or ninth or something. It had never happened before and I was so shocked. I was like, oh my God, did I do that in a time trail? But yeah. Yeah. Um, there's so many things I've, I've just like thought of as tangents. Um, so I'll start with the first one to stay on courses. Um, am I right? There was one that started at the top of a an escalator in a shopping center, but that was only during the time trail. Yeah, what like <laughs> what the hell was going on there? That was an ala. That is what I was saying, like an ala. If I can explain the course a little bit, yeah. we went down yeah. like an escalator, like just in a shopping mall, an escalator. We went down. Everyone was like so scared, and I was like, "Oh, this is so nice." I was like, "Oh, this is cool, right?" And then there were like two high jumps, which you can jump over it if you have enough speed. Then we went into like the back of a truck, and then we jumped out of another truck on the the loading. Yeah. Jumped out of it. and then we made it like all the corners blah blah, blah. and it was like a, a wall ride and then there was a like a, such a huge bridge just behind the corner and a lot of women could not like get it all over the bridge because it was so steep and it was just behind the corner and we could not make enough speed right after the corner like all the men they could do it easily but it's normal but mm-hmm. for the women, there are a lot of us. We could not really reach the top of the bridge. Wow. So that's how steep it was. And then. Yeah. That, that, so, <laughs> that, that sounds like something out of a computer game where you're like starting in a shopping center and then jumping on trucks and lorry like flatbeds and then going over a super steep bridge that is barely achievable for a lot of a rider that that is like fantasy video game stuff i think that what that was like one of the hardest courses to do this year not yeah. okay like maybe besides Fallon, but Fallon was just a little bit like how would you say like scary to me because there were like two like three jobs right after each other there wasn't mm. really much very technical course yeah. but as i was saying i'm only doing this it's like my second year racing and my technical skills are not that good yet i just do everything on good luck whereas while i'm riding cyclocross it's all because i know how to do it like i know how to do a corner everything just goes like just flow because i know it and then with my own bike it's just oh good luck <laughs> I will see where I land. I don't know. Maybe if I take this section of rocks, maybe I crash. Maybe I won't. I don't know. We will see. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then sort of I, I possibly I don't know the, the situation fully, but it looks like at, at the end of each eliminator, you do a, a short track race as a sort of, I guess, an extra ride 
because it could be that you, you turn up, you do the quarterfinals, get knocked out, and then that that's it. You, you've done about eight minutes of riding, including the time trial, and that's all you've done in competition. Um, I assume that that's the reason um, that they do it. Um, and you did have some success in one of them where I think you won. I can't remember the course, unfortunately. But yeah, how do you find doing that as well? So like some of the races, we have a short track behind it because I think it's it's the reason that you say, but I don't really have a clue. But um, in Leuven, I became third mm-hmm. in the, oh no, in Leuven, I was I was sixth or fifth in the short track and it was going very well and I was very surprised. And that is just what I mean with the fact that I'm just not that good at the acceleration, like the beginning, but once I get the speed, mm-hmm. I can go on full speed. So in Leuven, I was like sixth. And then I was thinking to myself, hmm, maybe next one will be better. And then out in there, I was third. And in Winterberg, I won the race. Oh, wow. So I just know now that if you give me like a 10 minute race, I'm very, very good. But if you give me like two minute race and I'm just not that good <laughs> because it's just too short for me. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Actually, it's kind of that, that mix between the, the marathon endurance and the, the eliminator sprint. It's kind of your happy place where short track is, it gives you that chance. Yeah, we also see in some of the courses that, um, yeah, we do like only one lap because the course is so big. And then we only get to like two or three minutes. And Mm. that's just sure for me. If they do like two lap races, then I'm always much better. They also see that in my results. I don't know why, but but I think that I just need the first, um, first lap to see how everyone else rides it. And then the second lap, I can be like, okay, I can do that faster. And yeah. that's what I was saying in the beginning, that I just need to see the people in the race doing it, and then I can also do it. That's why my time trail is also shit. Yeah, of course. That makes a lot of sense. But aside from all the mountain biking, um, you're also doing some cyclocross. What's your, your season looking like for, for cross this year? So this is, will be the first year, actually, that I'm not riding a full cyclocross season. Oh. Because... Uh, yeah, the World Championships have been very late with Eliminator. And um, yeah, I got sick, so I, like, well, I had a week off. Then uh, I decided to train again because I needed to, because on this Saturday, so on the 28th, is that I will yep. take a plane, whoosh, and all the way go to Australia to ride the Crocodile Trophy, which oh, wow. is a marathon race of nine days. I have rode a cyclocross um, already and I won the race, my first cyclocross race. But Well done. Uh, yeah, thank you. So maybe when I come back from the Crocodile Trophy, I will do some cyclocross races again. But then in January, I also will ride the Costa Blanca race. It's also a marathon race, but I will do it like in a team mm-hmm. with another guy. And then in March, the World Cup start again. So cyclocross is like my love like i really like it it's like the best thing in the whole world but i'm just going to be doing that in between all the other races that i'm riding this year because yeah Yeah. do you actually watch any cyclocross or is it just you race it and that's it or or yeah do you go oh i live in belgium it's on the tv like every saturday and sunday it's like the only thing you can watch here that's true see when i was young (laughs) we like well probably 10 years ago now we're talking like I used to have to use the internet and try and find some sort of stream and it'd it'd still be Sporza but it would be like some dodgy internet site that kind of half showed it and you're like probably getting about 10 viruses on your computer um I just thought if I got enough viruses that it'll block each other out and then I'd be fine um but yeah um I'd I'm so envious and jealous of you that you get like you can just watch it on TV. It's fine. Um, yeah, do yeah. You... Now it's like cyclocross on uh, on Instagram, and he always shares like all the live streams where you can find it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fortunately, we've got GCN now, so 
Uh, I can watch quite a bit of it. Um, but yeah, um, do you enjoy watching it? And do you ever watch and go, oh yeah, that's that's a good way of riding that, and I'll I'll use that as a tip, or do you just watch it for for enjoyment, or like how how does it feature in your your career? I'm gonna be very honest. Yeah, and not watch any cyclocross races because it's just too painful for me okay <laughs> sounds very weird but i just want to be as good as them and i just want to ride race like the world cups but all the dutch women are so good so it's so difficult and then it's just very hard for me to watch the races like the men races i can watch but like the women races because a lot of the time if there are just normal races in Belgium, I also ride with the girls who are riding on the TV. And then if I see them, I'm like, I feel so sad. And I feel a little bit like a disappointing, like a disappointment because I'm not riding on the TV like they are. So that's why I normally don't watch the women's race, but I do watch the men's race because I'm a little bit hard on myself. No, I, I know that feeling incredibly well. Um, I, I remember watching like Simon Yates becoming world champion on the track at the same stage where I, like I'm the same age as him so I'm like that could be me I mean it absolutely wouldn't be me I'd never be caught dead near a near a velodrome <laughs> racing at that speed um but equally I'm like ah oh, you know if I had a different way in life that could be me and I, I get that feeling incredibly like yeah. you know, it must be hard like watching I, I assume people like Puck and and Femme like absolutely killing it on the the cyclocross scene um but you know everyone's got their path in life and as you said last time like it's all about having fun Uh, and yeah like have you had fun this year i'm not having fun when i'm watching women (laughs) racing tv so i'm not watching only the men (laughs) yeah maybe that's a little bit mean for everyone who says well you need to watch the women race on tv because then we get like more coverage and things like that and I totally agree with them but I also need to keep my own uh how do you say it like mental health uh (laughs) correct (laughs) yeah absolutely and as you said like the Dutch women are so strong like if you were one of the top 10 Dutch women at cyclocross you're probably top 10 in the world because it's just that it's just so difficult I guess and, and so much talent um but yeah yeah have you had fun in your your season definitely a lot of fun most fun Uh, i had in years yeah Uh, and in terms of things to look forward to i know you said on on saturday you're at time of recording um you're you're flying out to australia um to do the crocodile trophy but before then i believe something important's coming um uh, on friday so uh, arriving on Friday, Yay. yeah, new kit. <laughs> um, tell us about that, like because, like, it, it's almost weird, like that colorway, the blue with the sort of, I want to say purple, um, but you know that exact style has, like, I see it and I go, oh yeah, that's clearly LED. Like, you know, any picture, I'm like, I know who that is immediately, but you're moving away from that. So yeah, for like three years, I've been riding in the blue, purple, and um, and like dark blue. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I did that because there was a study that says that if you have like on Instagram, if you have pictures that have blue in them, that they are like being viewed more than other kinds of colors. So that's why I stick to the blue and like my whole company's colors are also like the blue and the purple and everything is connected to the blue and the purple. But now I was thinking, I've changed so much this year and my life has changed so much. Why not change my colors? So we're specialized. Um, we decided to change it to like uh, red, orange, those kinds of colors. So I haven't seen it yet. That's the thing, because I know how it's like a little bit going to look. But the final... Um, customizing i have not seen so on friday it will arrive and then i will see how it's actually turned out wow and are, are you taking that with you to australia so it's like that's going to get a debut there or yes it's going to be 
scene first in Australia. So I hope it arrives on time because they were like, yeah, it's going to arrive on Friday. And I was like, yeah, but my plane is on, on Saturday. So it really needs to be in my house on Friday. So I hope, like, I hope, I hope, I hope that it arrives on time and that I can take it to Australia because it actually is designed for Australia. There are like kits in there who have like a fabric for the sun and all the things like that. Oh, so wow. I just hope it will be our own time. Uh, and I know you said uh, part of it represents the fact that you've changed and you're just wanting to move away from the blue, but what's the thinking behind the red? Like, is there some like bigger plan or is it just to be not blue? It's just because... <laughs> Red is like my favorite color in the whole world. Like actually all my all the clothes are red. I have like so many bags that are red. Like everything is red. Like even the interior of my house is red. <laughs> and uh, that's why I just went for the red. And then I saw like a, a neon uh, orange. And I was like, okay, this sits very well with it. Just combine those two. I'm Dutch, so I can take on the orange. Why not? Just put it all together and I will be happy. Oh, brilliant. Well, aside from, from yeah, um, Crocodile Trophy and New Kit, what else can we, we look forward to from you? Seeing a very happy Elodie on social media. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Anna. Sorry? Much more. I don't have to add to that because I just don't know how my year is going to look next year. A lot of cyclocross races when I'm back. And... This is, I'm going to say this on a podcast, so I need to make this true. This winter, I'm going to learn how to ski because I have no idea how to ski. Plus, I want to go somewhere where there is like snow and that I can ski. Yeah. Um, it's much I easier downhill than uphill. That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, brilliant. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see um, how you get on in Australia how the new kit looks i'm super excited for that and yeah i just look forward to whatever next next year brings but most of all a happy elody is perfect to see thank you so much